My name is Chuck Whitman, and I build great traders that lead great lives. Traders I've trained have generated in excess of a billion dollars in trading revenue and are found at some of the top proprietary trading firms and hedge funds in the United States. So who is Paul Tudor Jones? Paul Tudor Jones is one of the greatest traders of all time. Forbes estimates his net worth at $5.3 billion, which would make him the 345th most wealthiest person on the planet. However, Paul's fortune is largely private, and I believe his net worth to be much, much larger than $5.3 billion. Paul is also a friend of mine somebody that I met in 2008, somebody I've been blessed to have several fantastic conversations with, and somebody who has been a major influence, not only on my trading, but also on my life. So I'm gonna share with you 21 trading tips from Paul Tudor Jones, and how those tips relate to me and my own personal experience of trading, and how they relate to you to make you a better trader. Tip number one, when you're trading size, you have to get out when the market lets you out, not when you want to get out. This is something that most traders do not understand. They never get to the point that they trade big enough size to really understand the idea that sometimes you can't get out of the market. You can't get out of your trade. This can happen in a variety of circumstances. For a smaller trader, this can happen in a period like 2008 where markets just break. And sometimes there are no bids and offers. And this is a shock to a trader because they always have the belief they can always get out. That's not always the case. And when you're a big trader, you have to get out when liquidity is there. You can't just get out when you want. One important thing to understand is that the entire algorithmic community, artificial intelligence and trading, one of the things that the algo community does and artificial intelligence does is it uses sophisticated methods to help sniff out buying and selling by institutions. In other words, they help sniff out large buying and large selling. And then what they do is they front run that buying. They front run that selling. They buy ahead of it, knowing that that buyer is going to have to continue to buy. And if they can buy at the right level just ahead of them, they have a very small risk. And if that buyer continues to buy, they can just sit back, ride it, and sell it to that buyer at a higher price. This is what's called flow. And firms spend millions, sometimes billions of dollars for the right to see order flow. Citadel Securities is the largest market maker in the United States. And Citadel pays billions of dollars to firms like Robinhood to be able to access their order flow. Now think about that. If somebody's willing to pay a billion dollars or two billion dollars to get the rights to the order flow, what does that mean? That means they're making way more than that off the flow itself. They see an order come in, they're able to trade around it. Okay, so when you have a large position on, if you go to get out, all these algos are going to see you and they're going to front run you. They're going to race you and they're gonna make it very, very hard for you to get out. Now, when we trade, the only thing we control is our entry. We control when we go in and we control what price we go in. If we don't like the price, we don't have to trade. So when we're going in, we can be patient and so if we're a big trader and we can't get the liquidity, we just don't trade. But once you're in a position, we've given all control over to the market. Now it's out of your hands. So when we want to get out, we need large order flow to be able to get us out. And in that moment, what has to happen is there has to be some other variable that's causing some other large order or series of orders to be transacted that essentially the focus goes from you to that order. And when that happens, that is your opportunity to liquidate the position. So one of the things Paul would talk a lot about is always be looking at where swing highs or swing lows were in the market. And this goes back to like trading 101 for market makers. If I have a swing high, I know that above that swing high, there's going to be a lot of stops. Traders will have shorted there and they'll have put their stop order above, essentially with the idea that if it takes that price out, the order's no good. And so if Paul's long and he knows there's a swing high, then what he would do is he would layer up his sell orders above Above that swing high. He'd have them in the market ready to go. Price to start rallying up towards that high. And then what would happen? Market makers would push the price. They would bid it up through that swing high in hopes that that would trigger the stop orders. There'd be a wave of market orders buying into the market. And the market maker turns around and sells it to them. This is one of the most frustrating things for all retail traders is they see themselves get stopped out and then the market breaks without them. And they feel like, oh, these guys are gunning for my stops. Yeah, they are gunning for your stops. This is a play they make. So what Paul would do is he was smart. He essentially would know the market makers would bid it up into that swing high 
Those stop orders would get triggered, there'd be a wave of buying, and they would buy right into his offers. And he would liquidate a chunk of the position to those orders being stopped out. This is an example of getting out when you can, not when you want to. Early in my trading career, I traded a lot of illiquid options. And then I built a firm that built a reputation for trading illiquid options. A lot of these options we would trade as a market maker, we were the entire market sometimes. And so when we traded, some of these options we get in, we wouldn't get out for months. So we'd have to price it and then we'd have to know, like for us to get out, who we're gonna sell to. If I'm the market, who am I gonna sell to? I'm gonna need a customer to come in at some point and then I liquidate to the customer. So as you start to trade bigger, it's important to understand that you need to get out when you can, not when you want to. You get out in extremes when people are in emotional states, you liquidate into emotion. So it's much harder to liquidate after the turn. And if you're a small trader, you wanna understand, you may not always be able to get out when you want then either. And this is one of the reasons why we spend so much time training our students how to use options. I always say that I want you to trade from a place of low stress. I want you to trade from a place of low emotion. What I call it is trading from a position of strength, a place where you never have to be in a hurry, you never have to panic. And options are great at doing this for us. They are options, they give us optionality. So if something starts to go against us, we'll be out. We don't have to do anything. And so that really helps in this realm of trading size and, and being able to get out. When you have options, you can always get out because you, you just let the option take care of itself. You don't have to do anything. So this is tip number one. I will be back with tip number two of the 21 tips.